All right then, so the CFC, or the chlorofluorocarbon, is released in the troposphere, but it goes up to the ozone layer near the stratosphere, where high energy ultraviolet light breaks off a chlorine radical, which then proceeds to destroy the ozone molecules here in blue. The chlorine radical takes an oxygen from one ozone to the next ozone and produces three O2 molecules. Now ozone protects us from ultraviolet light. That's a good thing. But O2, the molecule that's produced once the chlorine radical has gone round on this cycle, doesn't protect us against anything. So a quick refresher on dichloro difluoromethane and why it's so bad for the environment. So it's released in the troposphere where we live, but it's so unreactive it eventually makes its way up into the stratosphere where the ozone layer is. And once it's in the ozone layer, it starts to destroy the ozone layer. So the chlorofluorocarbon is not affected by the ultraviolet light in the troposphere down below where it's released, where you and I live, because the atmosphere shields it from that. Okay, let's look at the equations. So UV light breaks up the CFC to make these two radicals. Oh, you think that's good, UV light, that's been used up. No, 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 because the Cl dot, the chlorine radical that's produced, is going to go on to destroy lots of ozone. Now, don't forget, everything's a gas. And this chlorine radical, the dot means it's a radical. There's an unpaired electron. It's actually a chlorine atom, but it does have high energy. Why is that? Well, it was just struck by an ultraviolet photon, and it's in a high-energy environment. And that's called heterolytic fission. You make two different products from breaking one reactant apart. So looking at the equations, the chlorine radical destroys an ozone, makes a chlorine monoxide radical, that mops up an oxygen radical. Oxygen radical, where did that come from? Well, that's a natural part of the environment up in this ozone layer. Just out of curiosity, let's add all these up, cancelling out what's on both sides. See if that gives us any clarity. Actually, I find the animation clearer than these equations. So when you add it all up, you can see that you're losing ozone. And that oxygen radical, which would normally be used to make ozone. Why don't I remove the, uh, the CFCs and get an overall picture of the destruction? Yep, an ozone molecule and an oxygen radical goes to make two oxygen molecules. And again, those oxygen molecules, they're not going to protect you from ultraviolet radiation. Now note that the Cl dot, the chlorine radical, goes in as a reactant and comes out as a product. So it's a catalyst. It's unchanged by the end of the reaction. And that red box contains 100,000 red pixels. Each one represents the damage that a chlorine radical can do, it can destroy 100,000 ozone molecules. So you see how even a little squirt of CFCs overall was really bad for the environment. So let's look how nitrogen dioxide also depletes the ozone in the ozone layer. Again, a high energy ultraviolet photon destroys that nitrogen dioxide. Wow, that was quick. Let's play that again. Well, it's a catalyst, so it actually does this again and again and again, many, many times. Notice how the nitrogen dioxide is regenerated and can go on to destroy another two ozone molecules each time. Producing three O2 oxygen molecules. All right then, NOx, so what is X? X is one or two. So nitrogen monoxide, nitrogen dioxide. The nitrogen dioxide is blown apart by the ultraviolet radiation. And notice how that O dot can destroy some ozone to make oxygen. And the NO, the nitrogen monoxide, that can also destroy ozone. So both of the products of that initial reaction can deplete ozone levels. 
and notice how the nitrogen dioxide is regenerated. So it can go around, break up again and do some more destruction. So adding up these equations shows again the destruction of ozone. Now that's a pity because ozone prevented ultraviolet radiation from coming and hitting the troposphere. That's where I live. Increasing my risk of melanoma and immunosuppression. So CFCs were used in refrigeration and they used to be in aerosols and those gases are still present in the atmosphere. Here's a question, which aerosol was the last one to have CFCs in it? Yep, the inhalers for asthma. And the reason we're in a muddy field is because agriculture generates the gases that make the nitrogen dioxide in the stratosphere. 